Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Together in oneness, we are Abe. So this video is going to be part one of a series of videos called Lost Knowledge of Soul Origins, The Seven Rays of Light. It came on really strongly for me to tap into more knowledge about the seven rays of light. I had really no idea what it was. Um, but because it was coming into my awareness more strongly, I knew that it was something that Abe wanted to talk to me about. So I tapped in and what started as one thing sort of unfolded and grew and expanded into this giant balloon. So what I thought was going to be a quick video has turned into more than probably a four part series. So I really don't know how long this is going to go for, but there's a lot of information and I'm just breaking it down so that you can integrate it a little bit more easily and to prevent really that overload of information. In this series, we're going to talk about the seven rays of light, what is known as the expressions or qualities of source itself, how it's translated on a non-physical vibrational soul level, how it's translated in the physical energetic level, and how it connects to soul origins and soul evolution. Keep in mind that the information that I'm presenting in this series is very much through my own perspective, from my own inner knowledge, and from a non-physical vibrational perspective of Abe. I have found it to be slightly different from other information out there regarding the seven rays of light because I was trying to find some similarities in the information that I was receiving to others out there, but it seems to be different. The reason why what came through was that I am interpreting the seven rays of light from this non-physical vibrational level. There are many different interpretations of the seven rays of light. Everyone's interpreting it from their own perspective and where they are vibrationally. So it's going to be different. There's going to be different perspectives and you're going to resonate with the perspective that you most resonate with. Another thing I want to note is that in this series, I am going to be referencing source interchangeably with God. Please know that when I reference God in this series or in any of my videos, if it happens to come out, I am referencing God and source as the same and one. It is that oneness energy in everything. So the very first thing that came to me regarding the seven rays of light were these descriptions of the very first three rays of light. They were described to me as three groups of God's expression. And these three groups were sort of broken down further into these keepers of God's expression. So the first ray of light, you have the keepers of God's energy or that life force energy. The second ray of light, we have the keepers of God's mind. And the third ray of light, we have the keepers of God's heart. It also sort of connected me back to my last video or one of my last videos where I talked about the is, Ra, and El energy, those light worker mission paths. And I wanted to know why, like what was the connection there because it seemed like it was very much um, connected in that's the same energy together in oneness. Just as a general overview, the first ray of light, it's about the energy or that life force of God. The first ray of light, like I said, are keepers of God's energy or keepers of that life force energy. And it is the energy of oneness. And if we have to connect them back to the three mission paths, we could say that the energy that guides the is mission path in the physical is actually the energy of this first ray of light. The second ray of light is known as the mind of God. They are, like I said, keepers of God's mind. It represents the energy of oneness in the mind. And if we have to connect it back to the three mission paths, it would be the energy that guides the raw mission path in the physical. And the third ray of light is known as the heart of God or love of God. They are the keepers of God's heart. 
it represents the energy of oneness in the heart. And if we have to connect it back to the three mission paths, it would be the energy that guides the L mission path in the physical. So to clarify these first three rays of light, as well as all seven rays of light, the seven rays of light are seven qualities of God or source in the non-physical. It is defined in the soul or on a soul level. The seven rays of light are vibrations of non-physical energy. The is, Ra, and El paths, those three mission paths, are light worker mission paths in the physical. It is connected to that collective energy in the physical. So that's the main difference is the physical versus the non-physical. Abe goes on to say that we sense the difference in the three mission paths and the seven rays of light in the physical interpretation of the energy. In the seven rays of light, we sense the energy as mostly pure energy in the non-physical. The three mission paths are purely for the physical form. The three mission paths can be compared to the actual path, that physical road in front of you that you take. It includes all the things that are physical, the road, the lampposts, the trees, the flowers on the side of the road. The seven rays of light can be compared to that non-physical energy that guides you on that path from within, not without. The three mission paths that we spoke about previously and the first three rays of light are not the same thing. The seven rays of light are expressions of God's source. The three mission paths are expressions of the physical vessels in God's form. The mission of the light workers are to align to the seven rays of light, or at least one of the rays. When you integrate one ray of light, you unknowingly open up all seven rays of light energy within the body. The seven rays of light in energy form in the body will help the light worker to ascend and expand and open up that life mission path that they take even further. When they are able to integrate at least one of the seven rays of light, the light worker or the person opens a portal between the physical vessel, the soul, and the seven rays of light so that the physical vessel can continue to expand their consciousness and their ascension. The three mission paths are the energetic vibration of the path joined with the physical. The physical vessel as a light worker will align to one of the three life mission paths based upon the energetic vibration the physical vessel holds within. These three mission paths, the Is, Ra, and El, are interchangeable and flexible. However, most light workers, when they incarnate, they know which one of the three mission paths that they're going to be taking or they're going to be working within. The first three rays of light are energy vibrations that run through the three mission paths. However, due to the very high vibration of the first three rays of light, which we're going to talk more extensively about in this video and video series, you must understand that very few light workers will actually be able to vibrationally align to the first three rays of light. And so I asked, if light workers are not able to align vibrationally with the first three rays of light, how do the first three rays of light intertwine or guide the three mission paths? And what came through was that the energy of the first, second, and third rays of light will still run through the light workers, joined with their physical energy to help guide their way on their path, on that mission path. It is similar to Christ consciousness energy or the God source within. Most people cannot align to these energies vibrationally, but it doesn't stop them, um, these energies, from existing within the person. Okay, so now that we sort of understand the difference between the three mission paths, that is Ra and L paths, and the first three rays of light, let's go ahead and dive deeper into the first three rays of light. So the first ray of light has the quality of power. Again, these are qualities of source or expressions of source. 
It has the energy of open creative energy and life force energy. It has the energy of the divine feminine and the energy of oneness. It represents the spirit, and as a little tangent, spirit is separate from the soul. I asked if the soul was connected here, and what came through was no, because the soul is open energy of the physical incarnation, and spirit is the essence of the soul. So the first ray represents the spirit. When I recorded this video series, I used spirit and soul as interchangeable. Um, but it hit me after that the first ray is solely the spirit. It's not the soul. So um, in case it comes up in the future, in future videos of this series, keep in mind that what I really mean is just the spirit in reference to the first ray. It also represents feelings. It is the energy of God. It also falls into the mind of the cosmos, which we're going to be talking about a little bit more later, and the mind of God. And it's more of that right brain creative representation. Keep that in mind. We'll also talk more about this later. The color associated with the first ray of light is violet. And each ray of light also, what was explained to me was they have keepers of the ray. These are energetic beings that help to, I want to say, uphold each of the rays, as well as help those who are vibrating within each of the rays. They are sort of like these um, energetic beings uh, that sort of help assist uh, people who are vibrating within, within that ray. Um, they work within the energy of the ray. However, we want to keep in mind that just because they are keepers of this one ray doesn't mean that they're also not helping in other, maybe other rays or in other ways. Um, but when it specifically comes to these seven rays, this is sort of their um, mission within the seven rays. So what was explained to me as keepers of the first ray was source open energy of Mother Nature, Bastet, Osiris, Lady Portia, and Horus. And these are just to name a few. And then other significant notes regarding the first ray is that it is energy that guides the is mission path in the physical. And that this ray in particular is the keeper of God's energy, that life force energy. And now in terms of my sort of thinking process as I was bringing forward this information, I was also thinking about sort of like the order of creation in terms of these seven rays. And when I thought about that order of creation, I sort of thought about the Bible and how, you know, Adam was created first and then Eve. And so when it was brought forward that this first ray was the energy of divine feminine, and I asked, you know, I thought that maybe divine masculine would be the first ray. And what came through was no, and Abe actually had me open up to a specific page in the book that I'm currently reading called The Hermetica, The Lost Wisdom of the Pharaohs. I'm going to put a link to this book below because it is so excellent in terms of aligning to the information that I've been receiving and me being able to see some sort of confirmation of, or alignment of information that I've been getting with these old texts. So they told me to open Hermetica to page 59, and I'll put up the text on the screen. And page 59 says, At first, man was solely eternal and spiritual, but autumn, meaning source, saw that his new creation could not tend the earth unless he sheltered him in a material envelope, giving man a mortal body as well as an immortal soul. So Autumn bade nature be, and from his voice came a woman's form, so lovely that the gods were smitten with her beauty. Autumn made nature mistress of the world. She communed with herself, producing all kinds of seeds, which Autumn took hold of with his hands, and scattered over the earth, who is the mother of all worldly things. Seeing in man a beautiful image of Autumn, nature was filled with insatiable love, she clasped him to her, and they merged to become one in love. So what was being shown to me was the non-physical vibrational aspect of the creation. And when you look at it that way, 
you see that there first existed the planet, and the planet is the energy of Mother Nature. So what they're saying is that there first existed the Divine Feminine, Mother Nature, which created basically all things at first, because it communed with itself. It created the seeds, which created all these plants and life on Earth. Man was at first spiritual and immortal, meaning it was just energetic, vibrational, and then it was created into a mortal body to have that balance of the two mortal and immortal selves within the one form of the body of man. So basically, first was the Divine Feminine. I asked Abe if this applied to only this planet or to the galaxy or to the universe in terms of this first ray being that energy of the Divine Feminine. And what came through was it applies to the entire universe. The seven rays of light apply to the entire universe, and the first ray is the energy of the Divine Feminine throughout the entire universe. And I said to Abe, oh, okay, so physical woman came after man. And they said, yes, but not in the non-physical. Nature was there first, that energy of that divine feminine, then came man. Remember, these seven rays are the non-physical vibrational qualities and energies of God's source. So we are sensing things through the non-physical vibrational space of creative energy. Okay, so let's move on to the second ray. The second ray has the quality of wisdom. It has the energy of knowledge and divine masculine. It also has the energy of oneness in the mind. It represents the mind and thought. It is the mind of the cosmos and the mind of God. It is more left brain or visionary, as Abe likes to say, not analytic, but visionary in the sense of this non-physical energy. And we'll also again talk more about this in just a bit. The color represented by the second ray is indigo, and the keepers of the second ray are Thoth, Ma'at. I asked why Ma'at was in the second ray category um, and not the first because of that divine feminine. And what came through was that most lost knowledge of Ma'at was actually her wisdom. So she must have had a lot of that knowledge and wisdom um, in her energy. Also keepers of the second ray are Seshat, Lord Excalibur, and yes, this is the sword of King Arthur. Uh, Abe said that there is lost knowledge held within this sword. Also Buddha, Metatron, who Abe calls the Prince of Knowledge. So actually they said it was Prince Metatron. Um, Green Terra, El Moria, the Crystal Realm, so all the crystals and Mahavatar Babaji. Other significant notes about the second ray is that it is the energy that guides the raw mission path in the physical and known as the keepers of God's mind. And the first and second rays are called the mind of the cosmos and the mind of God because what was told to me was the first manifestation of God was or is the mind. And the mind of God is seen in the cosmos, the overall cosmos. And what came through was the cosmos were the first thing that was created. So that is where the energy of the mind is held. It is the mind of the cosmos, the mind of God being the cosmos or the manifestation within the cosmos. What was shown to me was that the first and second rays um, they both represent the mind of the cosmos or the mind of God together. The first ray being that right brain creative mind and the second ray being that left brain visionary mind. When combined together, the mind equals thought. It combines to create thought. And then what was shown to me was that thought spoken into vibration, which is the word, creates the third ray, which is the body of the cosmos or the body of God. So the third ray has the quality of love, the energy of life, 
the energy of oneness in the heart and the energy of love from source on a soul level. It represents the body of the cosmos and the body of God, like we went over, the divine child and his or her consciousness, and the heart of God or the love of God. The color represented by the third ray is blue, and some third ray keepers. So keepers, what's being shown to me to describe the keepers of the ray a little bit better, is that they are figures who are sort of like representatives of the vibration of the ray, or they are sort of assigned to the ray to help work within the vibration of that ray and to help the people who, or the souls who vibrate at that specific ray. They are also opening or helping to open the energy within the three mission paths, the Is, Ra, and El paths. So even if light workers do not vibrate at one of the first three rays, because it's very unlikely that they will because the vibration is so high, these keepers of the ray are still working through their energy. They're still working with them in some way um, if the person or the light worker is aligned on their mission path. So the keepers of the third ray are Ra, the sun, our solar sun, the galactic central sun, and the blue avians. Other significant notes of the third ray is that it is the energy that guides the L mission path in the physical, and it is again that union of the first and second ray, and it is known as the heart of God or the love of God. As the first and second ray are the mind of the cosmos, they are the cosmos, that first manifestation of God, which is the mind, which was the cosmos. The third ray, which was born out of the mind of the first and second ray, is the body of the cosmos. So that includes everything in the cosmos, such as the planets, the solar systems, etc., the form of the cosmos. Okay, so let's look at it slightly differently um, so we can better understand these first three rays. A vision that I was shown was the process of cells dividing or separating. How one cell, the parent cell, divides or separates into two daughter cells. It was shown to me that the parent cell was source, an eternal energy, light and life. And the parent cell splits into two daughter cells, which are represented by the first and the second ray. And I asked, does source split into two daughter cells? Or do the two daughter cells just sort of break off from source? And what came through was that source splits, like a parent cell splits into two. So this parent cell, source, becomes the first and second ray after it splits. And I asked, so if this parent cell, if source, splits itself into two um, daughter cells, the two rays of light, the first two rays of light, then does that mean that there is no original source left? And what came through was that source splits into two, the first two rays. And from those first two rays, everything in the cosmos is born, which is why source can then be found in everything in the cosmos and universe. However, the original source energy, that parent cell, still exists and is found in its original state as the infiniteness of creation continues, that infinite loop of creation. So I asked, how exactly is the third ray created? And what came through was that the third ray is created from the merge of the vibration between the first two rays. And so I asked, what is that vibration of the first two rays that merge? And what came through was that the vibration of the second ray is the word of God. And I asked, what is the vibration of the first ray? 
and what came through is that the vibration is very high of the first ray. It is not able to open without opening an explosive energy. That's how high the vibration of the first ray is. And so I asked, how do these two vibrations of the first ray and the second ray, how do they merge? And what came through was that they merge from the thought of God. And like I said, the first two rays make up the mind of God. And what came through was, read page 12 of the Hermetica. So I'm going to turn to page 12 of the Hermetica. And I'll put on the screen the text of page 12. And what it says is, And I heard an unspeakable lament, an inarticulate cry of separation. The light then uttered a word, which calmed the chaotic waters. My guide asked, Do you understand the secrets of this vision? I am that light, the mind of God, which exists before the chaotic dark waters of potentiality. My calming word is the Son of God, the idea of beautiful order, the harmony of all things with all things. Primal mind is parent of the word, just as in your own experience, your human mind gives birth to speech. They cannot be divided one from the other, for life is the union of mind and word. Now fix your attention upon the light and become one with it. And what it's saying is that this mind of God, the meaning the second and first rays combined, which equals the mind of God, that left and right brain combined, they existed before the chaotic dark waters of potentiality. And I saw the chaotic dark waters of potentiality as the third ray, the body of God, all forms of potential. And they're also saying that the mind of God, which exists before the chaotic dark waters of potentiality, that third ray of light, they're clarifying in that it's as if you look at the first, second, and third ray of light as already existing. The third ray of light, before the first and second rays merge to create that third ray of light, the third ray of light exists as these chaotic dark waters of potentiality. When the first and second rays of light merge through their thought with a vibration of word, then it says, my calming word is the son of God, the idea of beautiful order, the harmony of all things with all things. They're saying that when the word is spoken into vibration, it creates or it transforms the third ray of light into that beautiful order, the harmony of all things with all things. The third ray of light is the Son of God. It is the body of God. It is the form of God. It is all things in the universe spoken out or that vibration from the thought, but the thought has to come first, and the thought stems from the mind, um, and through the thought comes the spoken word, which creates that beautiful order of the forms or the bodies of God. And then it says, primal mind is the parent of the word. So again, going back to primal mind being the first and second rays combined, they are the parent of the word because... The primal mind first has a thought, and then that thought turns into the vibration of the word, the word being the Son of God, or rather, the third ray of light. And it goes on to say, just as, in your own experience, your human mind gives birth to speech. So, to compare to our own experience, our human mind is the first and second rays, and it gives birth to speech which is the third ray. Again, the first, second, and third rays are all non-physical. So speech is still um, a form, if you will, but speech cannot exist without the human mind giving way to thought first and then speech. It goes on to say they cannot be divided, meaning the human mind, the left and the right brains, the first and the second rays of light, 
for life is the union of mind and word. Mind being the first and second rays, the mind of God, and word being that body of God, the vibration that's birthed out of the first and second rays, the third ray of light. And we're going to talk more a little later, or at least in the next video, about how life is formed out of the union of the first, second, and third ray of light. And this is sort of how the souls are born out of that third ray of light, which is essentially the union of the first, second, and third rays of light together. And then it says, now fix your attention upon the light and become one with it. Light being source, essentially, because everything in the universe is oneness. Everything stems back to source in some way. So another thing to look at is how this parent cell splits into two cells, the first and second ray. The first and second ray then combine and merge to create the third ray, the body of God. So Abe is saying that this means that the third ray is actually basically a mirror reflection of source God. The third ray is created in the image of God. It is basically the same thing, just kind of like they're saying it's kind of like a watered down version of God because source itself splits into two and comes back together to create that third ray. Abe goes on to say that the first three rays create the mind, body, and spirit trinity in the non-physical space. It is closest to God or source, and it is a mirror reflection of God on a vibrational soul level. So the first ray represents the spirit or the soul. The second ray represents the mind, and the third ray represents the body. And going back to the part in the Hermetica that says, for life is the union of mind and word, mind being the first and second rays and word being the third ray. What's coming through is that life is the union of all three, first, second, and third rays, the mind, body, and spirit put together in the space of the third ray. So it's only in the third ray that the first, second, and third can sort of merge. And through this merge in the third ray stems the um, sort of creation of a soul or souls. And so this is how souls stem from the vibration of the third ray. And it's in the souls or the energy that is created from this merge of first, second, and third rays, the mind, body, and spirit put together that creates life. And that's how we get life being the union of mind and word or life being the union of the first, second, and third rays. And if we go back to the first, second, and third ray, the descriptions in this table, we can also see that the first and second ray, again, it is it combines to create the mind of God or the mind of the cosmos. And the third ray is the heart of God. So the first, second, and third rays can also sort of combine or make up the that balanced heart-mind connection in the physical or as interpreted in the physical. Abe goes on to say that the trinity of the first three rays are in everyone's heart. Most cannot connect to the strong energy of the trinity because of closed hearts. Closed hearts cannot open to the strong energy of the trinity. Abe goes on to say that the first three rays of light are not in the physical world. They are of the vibrational world, the non-physical. I asked, can the energy or the vibration of these first three rays of light be brought into the physical? And what came through was not likely. The first three rays of light are purely non-physical open energy of vibration that people can align to or vibrate with on a soul or non-physical level. Not many souls do currently 
but ride the Ascension Escalator into 5D and you'll find that many more souls will begin to vibrate at these higher vibrational rays. I asked, but aren't the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th rays of light non-physical energy as well? And what came through was yes, but more so physical manifestation energy of non-physical vibration. The non-physical vibration of the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th rays can be brought into the physical as physical manifestations of those non-physical vibrations. So let's turn back to this illustration of the parent cell source splitting into the two daughter cells, the first and second ray. This third ray, as you can see, is sort of like this prism. And the first, second rays, as well as source energy, can sort of be seen as a collective of white light. And this white light sort of... Um, births or um, is directed into the third ray because it combined creates the third ray and as it kind of moves through the body of God which is the image of source it refracts into the seven rays of light the first second and third ray are combined within the third ray because they make up the third ray and this is actually also tying me back to the Hermetica, where it says that my calming word is the Son of God, the idea of beautiful order, the harmony of all things with all things. It is this refraction of light from the first and second rays, as well as with source. And as it hits into this third ray of light, it creates this refraction of the seven rays of light. This is that sort of idea of beautiful order, the harmony of all things with all things. Um, and it's just sort of tying me back there right now. And I wanted to make a note of that. And in the next video of this series, we're going to talk more about these refractions of the seven rays of light how the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th ray of light is refracted through the 3rd ray as non-physical vibration, but can be interpreted or manifested into the physical body, um, as well as how our soul origins, or most of our soul origins, stem from this 3rd ray of light. As we dive deeper into the seven rays of light, we'll talk more about soul origins, soul vibration, our soul energy signature, and also our roles as light workers on the ascension path and what these seven rays of light have to do with all of this. Um, we're also going to go into those convoluted conversations about where we come from on a soul level, the construct of our galaxies, where our souls go when we die and so, so, so much more. So stay tuned on this ride of lost knowledge of soul origins. This video series is going to take us through the end of this year. I'm not sure how many videos are going to come out through this series, but I have enough information for at least four or five videos. You're going to have the chance to ask questions. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and Abe will choose the ones that they want to expand more upon. But that's it that I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, together we are Abe in oneness and love.